if you're wondering why we do this crop damage stuff, it's because of this right here. Um, as you can see behind me, all this corn has just been just demolished. And uh, you might think it's just right here along the edge. And yes, it's concentrated right here on the edge. But if you walk through this cornfield, it's all like this. There's pockets of it here and there and around any swales out in the middle of this field. All the way around this field, there's, there's a lot of damage like this. When they nip off the tassels on the top of the corn right here, it can't mature. So this corn, after they, they come along and they just nip the silk right here and it can't germinate. So if the, if the tassels up top can't germinate the corn through the silk, then the corn is no good. It never matures. So um, that's the problem we have. These deer will just go on along and take a look at that, like that right there, that silk is just nipped right off. They just come along here and they just nip the silk. And then they eat the, they'll actually eat the stalk and the leaves and everything. Um, not as much as the silk, but take a look at this right here. You can see it. Look at that. I mean, they've eaten the top off that, that whole, that whole ear is gone. Same as that one, same as that one, and all along here. So we've got all sorts of damage, especially on the edge here. I mean, it's really, really bad on the edge. But I mean, I'm just walking along and I'm seeing corn stalk, head after head after head. It's just chewed off, just like this. So that's what we're out here to do is just get these deer down to carrying capacity so they're not eating everything. You look at these trees, you look at this, the woods around here, and there's a browse line on it. There should not be a browse line if the, if the deer are at carrying capacity or below. So these deer are above carrying capacity, so the land cannot support as many deer as there are. Even with all this food around, they still just demolish those trees and they create a browse line. That tells you something that there's overpopulation in this area by a large amount. So... That's why we're out here. The DNR manages this. They come out and they check this. They look at the corn damage that they've got right here. And then they issue permits based on that. Those deer management assistance program permits here in Michigan. And uh, they're very managed. People come out and look. So you can't, you can't say that we're not doing this, uh, that we're just shooting all the deer and uh, it's bad for the habitat and bad for the resource. Um, we're actually trying to manage the resource, so it's a good thing. The hunting around here is actually very, very good. I wish I could hunt up this area during bow season. Another thing is, you know, you might think that this is just to go out here and whack a bunch of deer and, you know, it's just easy peasy, but it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's not even nine o'clock in the morning and it's already 80 degrees and about 90% humidity. So um, as you can see, I'm sweating, walking all this distance. And then with all the corn and beans, it's hard to get these deer out of here. So that's why we utilize a high shoulder shot a lot. We wait for these deer to get near the edges, get near the edge of the corn, near the edge of the woods, places that we can get a four wheeler in. So we can just quickly get in, get out. We're not destroying a bunch of beans. We're not destroying a bunch of corn. So high shoulder shot, drop them right in their tracks and uh, strategically try to take these deer out. Once in a while, it doesn't work. Sometimes you gotta shoot them in the middle of the field and then you might shoot them behind the shoulder and hope they run to the woods. So, um, but it's very strategic how we do this and it is a lot of work. It's not, it's not the hunting you're used to. It's a cropping operation, that's for sure. spotter right behind me of course of course my spotter had a lot more faith in me Brooke said I could kill that deer and uh, that was that was 400 yards um, with a 300 wind short mag um, this is a fully custom gun um, Bear Creek ballistics built it for me that deer I'm confident at that range on paper but you have to have the right circumstances to take that kind of shot in the field. And I'll tell you what, I just made that kind of shot 
400. It was a shade over 400 at that range. I've got about a 16 inch drop and dropped her right in her track. So I think I hit her a little high, but she went right down. That was cool. That was cool. 400 yards. That's my longest shot. I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm a bow hunter. I'm not used to these long shots. So let's, uh, let's go take a look. That's going to be, that's going to be a long walk out there, Brooke. I'm going to get tired. Run. Will you carry me? No. I'm, I'm going to get tired. I'm going to run. <laughs> All right. Let's go take a look at her. Here she is. Nice big doe. Yep. Look at the size of that. Is she bigger than mine? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Good. Got another deer. Yeah. That was awesome, huh? Eight deers? Nine? Eight. Eight, nine. Eight deer. Oh. Well, look at where we were. Way back over there. I've already got a nice buck out here. Looks like a looks like a nine or a ten point. I can't tell. I didn't look too close because uh, it's not it's not buck season. So it's nice to see those bucks. This is not a place I can hunt uh, during bow season anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But um, just back out crop damage shooting, and today I I brought my 300 wind short mag. Um, and on the end of it is something new, um, new to me at least. Uh, I've got a, a GSL suppressor on the end of it. It's made right here in Michigan, and I can't wait to use it. I've been shooting it for the last couple days. I just got it a couple days ago, and uh, um, this thing is awesome. I mean, it's so nice to be able to shoot your gun without using hearing protection with the suppressor. Boy, it really, really... Uh, quiets it down. I mean, it is not silent. Um, what you see in the movies is not true. Um, other than like with 22s and subsonics and stuff like that, but that's not what we hunt with. So the cool thing about using a suppressor is I can hear when the bullet hits every time. You know, it's just really nice to be able to confirm that very quickly, very easily just with the shot. So after my Africa trip earlier this year, um, I really really fell in love with using a suppressor so um, you're gonna see me using that a lot more nowadays because it is it sure is a nice tool and it just helps you protect your hearing so you only got two ears in your life might as well protect them she's gonna come up into this field i think she's gonna come into this field nope That's a good one. That's a nice buck right there. That's a pretty good buck. All right, I shot her for about 330 yards. Um, I'm shooting about oh, seven inches low at that range. So that worked out good. Shot her right there. Put it right up at the top of her shoulder, a little right up high. Dropped her right there. amazing I mean the bucks are still out there feeding I mean I know it's loud still but nowhere near as loud as it was before and the sound kind of just reverberates in here and it's a different kind of sound I mean it's just not it's not the same as a kaboom you know that we normally get with a rifle so um, these suppressors are just awesome especially for crop damage shooting so Stop. Stop. Come on, no, stop. I think I dropped her. <laughs> Had to 
had to hold high on that one. That corner is 330 yards away from me and she was way out away from the corner. So I would say she was in that, you know, 380, 390 range. I don't think she broke 400, but I'll have to rearrange that. But it looks like I dropped her right in her tracks. Um, I heard the smack. It takes a minute for that sound to get back to me. Uh, but it is so cool because, you know, it just, you can reach out there and touch them with a 300. Um, this is a 300 wind short mag, Manners Precision Stock. Um, it's got a Zermatt action, Bart line barrel, Timney trigger, Hawkins Precision bottom metal, and I put a GSL GT mag titanium suppressor on the end of it. And I mean, this thing is a tack driver. It is so fun to shoot. And uh, here in Southern Michigan, here in Southern Michigan, I don't get a chance to shoot my uh, necked cartridges near as much as uh, some people do up north. So I got to make the most of it during the summer here, during the summer crop damage season. So um, helping the landowner out, and it may seem like I'm shooting a ton of deer, but what you don't realize is these are spread out over a 10, 15 mile range. Um, so even though I'm shooting, um, that was my 14th and 15th year of the summer. They're spread out over such a big area that it's not really putting much of a dent in it. We need help from other crop damage shooters around the area as well. So you get out the big guns and you employ the big guns to uh, take care of your damage problem. And um, as you can see, these there's bucks out here and they don't, they don't even care. They're still sitting right there. He's standing right next to that doe I shot. So, yep. It's pretty fun. You get a lot of practice this time of year. It's really cool. Having that suppressor on right there makes a big difference. That is a lot of fun. When you're able to shoot a deer and the other ones don't even care and you don't have ringing in your ears, suppressors are a good thing. Um, good hunting tool and a great tool to protect your hearing. So, um, but made a good shot on that one. This one was uh, 340 yards. The last one was 375 yards. So um, two longer shots today. Uh, some of these deer typically come out shorter, but sometimes they don't. Not bad. Very happy with that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my daddy's channel.